Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Now, recently we've covered the Consort Class Cruiser along with the CR90 Corvette. A lot of you guys have suggested that we should continue our coverage of these ships by looking at the Hammerhead Corvettes. Which is a good idea because the Hammerhead Corvette that we see in Rogue One actually has a pretty interesting backstory. Anyone who is familiar with the Old Republic era probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. During the Old Republic, many of the capital ships fielded by the Republic Navy featured the Hammerhead style cockpit, and so that's where we'll be starting today's conversation. The first time we hear about this Hammerhead style cockpit is in the ship known as the Torian Class Frigate, which was designed by Rendelli Hyperworks, a company you should probably remember for the remainder of this video. The Praetorian class frigate was around 180 meters in length and equipped with a hyperdrive, two light turbo lasers, point defense laser cannons, and it required a crew of 1,500 and could carry around 2,700 passengers. The ship was used by the Republic against the Sith during the Great Sith War. Its light armament meant that it served mainly as an escort ship in a defensive role against starfighters. After the Republic emerged from the Great Sith War victorious, they sold off a lot of their excess frigates to either private individuals or local defense forces. The ship had not only become a symbol of the Republic's victory, it was also quite functional and would become quite popular amongst the civilian population. Which is why eventually Rendelli Hyperworks would sell this design to Carillion Engineering Corporation, a company that was known for mass producing consumer ships and had a pretty large market size to fill. Eventually, Rendelli Hyperworks would sell this design to Carillion Engineering Corporation, who, as we all know, is an expert at making consumer market ships. Now, peace wouldn't last long for the Republic, and soon the galaxy would find itself at war. This time, the Mandalorians would go on a rampage and take over huge swaths of the galaxy, pushing the Republic back towards the core worlds. The main capital ship that the Republic would rely on during this period would be the Hammerhead Cruiser from Rendelli Hyperworks. Unlike the Praetorian class, the Hammerhead Cruiser would actually be considered a main ship of the line. It was only slightly longer at 315 meters, but it also carried a larger assortment of turbo lasers along with point defense weapons. With its engines oriented to the rear and the weapons all located at the front of the ship, the Hammerhead Cruiser specialized diving headfirst into enemy lines and breaking through their formations. This meant, of course, that the Hammerhead Cruiser lacked protection and offensive firepower from the sides and the rear. But at the same time, you can imagine its front profile is extremely small, making the ship hard to hit. And because all the weapons are concentrated right here, this could be deadly in large numbers. And that's basically what the Republic would use for almost 3,000 years. So this clearly was a very viable tactic for them. Now, aside from this unique head-on design, the Hammerhead Cruiser was a relatively affordable ship because it was quite small. It was also mass-produced, further decreasing the price per unit. It was said that at the height of the Mandalorian Wars, Rendelli Hyperworks would finish one of these ships every 10 days, and this would go on for several years. As we mentioned before, Rendelli Hyperworks would sell the design for the Praetorian class frigate to the Corellians. While CEC did produce plenty of Praetorian frigates, it also would spin off its own line of capital ship. This would be known as the CR-12 Corvette, otherwise known as the Thantra class Corvette. Despite being labeled the Corvette, this ship was similar in size to the Hammerhead Cruiser, which again was around 315 meters. Besides some cosmetic differences, the Thantra class was also lightly armed compared to the Hammerhead Cruiser, with only two twin-mounted turbo lasers and a variety of smaller point defense weapons. But its four banks of twin ion engines produced a healthy amount of thrust which meant that the Thantra class was pretty fast and agile at sub-light speeds, which is basically how most captains would use this ship to dart in and dart out of combat. Now, all the ships we talked about so far were in service together at the same time during the Old Republic era. So most likely, if you were alive during this period of time, you'd be familiar with this shape for a cockpit. And this is why the Hammerhead style cockpit was as much of a symbol for the Old Republic as the triangular shaped Star Destroyers were a symbol for the Empire. So it's not surprising at all that during the Golden Age of the Republic, where demilitarization was a major factor in shipbuilding, that Rendelli Hyperworks and also Krillian Engineering Corporations would design the Sierfna class Corvette. This hammerhead was closer to 100 feet long and it featured three laser cannons, two of which were forward mounted and one which fired towards the rear. 
It also featured either three or four sublight engines depending on the configuration. So during the interior wars, the Hammerhead Corvette was actually mainly used as a tugboat or a freighter, so it was designed for civilian purposes and wasn't exactly maxed out when it came to how much power the engines had or how many weapons it had on board. During the Rebellion period, it would be used as a scout ship or picket ship, and some special models were also fitted with torpedoes, giving it a lot more offensive firepower. Now, due to their more civilian design, the Rebellion was able to get their hands on ships like this much more easily than something like a gazanti class freighter, which the Empire was using in droves. Now, despite the fact that the Hammerhead Corvette was being built for civilian purposes, it was actually still a very tough and compact ship. As a matter of fact, the entire cockpit area was heavily armored and served as almost a battering ram. This could be because it was originally used for uh, pulling around larger ships as a tugboat. During the Battle of Scarif, the Lightmaker shows us just how powerful this tiny ship can be when it pushes an ion torpedo disabled Star Destroyer into its sister ship, sending them both plunging down into the planetary shield guarding the planet below. That's the most efficient kill I've seen since that guy in Green Squadron plunged into the bridge of the Executor. It's interesting that the Republic, which was known for its pacifism and lofty ideals and democracy, would choose a ship that looked like a hammer, which is very much oriented for offensive attacks. Still, it's one of the cooler designs in Star Wars, and I really love how they used it in Rogue One. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the Hammerhead Corvette. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.